Well, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me here. I mean, I'm really honored that you would even come and ask me to, to share with folks. So I'm really grateful for that. So thank you. <laughs> um, so I've been a massage therapist for 15 years and it kind of like my interest in herbalism kind of evolved out of that. Like when I first started practicing massage, I worked somewhere that had essential oils and started playing with those and it just sort of evolved out of that. I like decided to randomly like throw a spa party for some friends and like made all the lotions and like body butters and all the things. Mm. Like, I had no idea what I was doing. I got this book <laughs> for like $5 at like Barnes and Noble or whatever it was oh, back yeah. in the day. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And, um, you know, I did a couple of those things over the years, took some classes. I was really interested in soap making at one point, but never had like really the right space to do that in. I mean, I'm in DC in an apartment. Now I have a dog. So like, it's just not safe to be working with chemicals. Right. Right. But what happened? So I had, um, I had a health issue where I had like a, a benign tumor in my neck mm -hmm. and I, I sensed that there was a way to correct it naturally, but didn't ever really figure that out until later. Mm -hmm. um, so I ended up going the surgery route just because I didn't really know what to do. Come to find out like there's a ton of stuff that Chinese medicine and herbalists can do to work with that stuff. Right. Um, but I think that's kind of what like piqued my interest into like, Essential oils are great, but it always felt like there was something more, like there was something missing. Mm -hmm. And at one point in trying to not be working in my house, <laughs> it took a long time to like get my office and like bring that into real life and manifestation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, at one point I was thinking of buying a spa that I worked at. Mm. And like in that process, I had this vision that there was a room off of the reception area that had a fireplace and they didn't really use it for anything. And I had this vision of having herbs like all around the room and formulating for people. This is like before I even knew herbalism was a thing, right? Wow. Yeah. So it's really kind of strange. And then randomly, like a person I met through a friend when he was moving away, mm -hmm. We became Facebook friends and she posted about this herbalist who was leading this like herbal CSA. So like, you know how you buy into like a crop share. Yeah. Um, so, but this is like for herbal medicine. So That's she was so cool. <laughs> and it was literally a 10 minute walk from my apartment. It was like a block over. I'm like, come wow. on. So I yeah. took that class for like the seat, the whole season. And I was like, this is what I need to be doing. Like, Service has always been in my life. I mean, even as young as like 13 or 14 years old, I was always like caring for people, like friends who were having like psych issues or like my grandparents, like whatever. I was always taking care of people. And yeah. so like being able to help people with the plants and like with things from nature just seems like it brings everything together for me. Like massage is awesome, but that also always felt like something was missing. And then like, I feel like this pulls everything together for me. Yeah, I love that. And I, yeah, I can definitely see that I, even as you're expressing it. And, yeah. and y you mentioned, you know, you that even when you went through that experience with the tumor and getting the surgery, but you had this sense with the, with the herbs that, you know, there was something deeper there. And so I think that's the beautiful thing through this process of going through uh, becoming a body mind coach and learning how to honor those feelings and those deeper senses that we've maybe had our whole lives, but have never acted on it because we just didn't know, right? That's that transition into conscious awareness. But I love, I love that, you know, all your experience with that. And so moving forward into this space, being an herbalist now, um, there's so many questions I want to ask, but let me, is there, <laughs> because I too, I have a, I've, you know, shared with you before, but very briefly, like I've been around a lot of I'll call them opportunities to um, delve into the natural world. And from a young age, I have also seen the power of na uh, herbs and um, homeopathic remedies. And, you know, when you experience those things for yourself and um, the power of how effective they can be, and you just educate yourself a little bit and, you know, find the resources. But when you experience that for yourself um, and then you have a core value like 
caring, like if you care for people, you naturally want to bring that to your friends, to your family, and then just spread it out. So that's what I see in here with you. And so what are some ways that you have spread that knowledge or, or use that core value of caring paired with this knowledge and herbalism? Mm -hmm. That you know, I feel like I'm really just starting to step into that, right? Mm -hmm. I finally feel like that imposter syndrome is maybe like going away a little bit and like finally starting to feel comfortable with like, oh mm -hmm. yeah, I do know some stuff that like, mm -hmm. I feel like when I know a thing, it starts to feel like, well, everybody knows what it, everybody knows that, yeah. right? But I have to recognize mm -hmm. that like, maybe I know things on a different level or like I can share things in a way that maybe they didn't hear it before. And so, right. you know, one of the biggest things that I've done just in the past couple of weeks is I started a Facebook group for people to all come together. Um, and I know in the DC area, a ton of people through my healing networks that like a lot of people who are leaders. So it's really a place where people have come together to share self-care tips, to share mm -hmm. wellness ideas, to post, Hey, I'm teaching this yoga class. Hey, I'm doing this. And like, it's all virtual and like it's a really cool space that people are like supporting each other i don't even have that much to do because they're on there supporting each other and it's really kind of strange right um, right and so i'm using that now as a place to as a forum to like step into my role with the herbs and like there's been this whole thing with elderberry recently and and whether it's safe to use or not right now yeah. and so um, I did a bunch of research on that and come to find out that it's perfectly safe to use. Um, there, particularly in the prevention phase, okay. there may be herbs that are not necessarily safer, but are better suited for this virus that we're dealing with right. than elderberry. Um, if right. someone does contract COVID-19. Yeah. So, um, Two of the herbs that I am really recommending right now are reishi, which is a medicinal mushroom, medicinal mushroom, <laughs> um, and astragalus, which is an adaptogenic herb. They both, they're both adaptogens actually. So an adaptogen is an herb that helps your body become more resilient to long-term stress, which mm -hmm. obviously we're dealing with. Reishi in particular also has an affinity for the, um, for the respiratory system. Right. And so that's, that's what I'm really suggesting that people lean into a little bit more right now. I think it has, it's, it's just better suited for what we're seeing in the way this virus manifests as opposed yeah. to like flu or something like that. Yeah. I, um, yeah. Hmm. I think that's, that's so important. I, I mean, I just want to linger in that space for a little bit because, because I do feel like right now I've seen it. Um, there's so much on the internet and there, I mean, there's so much greatness too. so many collaborations, so many people sharing resources of support, um, which is wonderful. It's, it's great that that community, everyone's coming together and trying to help out and it could also be very confusing. So I want to zero in on, you know, and also touch on when you brought up imposter syndrome. I feel like so many of us can feel that way um, as we're stepping into the space that we've always felt within, but have never fully embraced or accepted, especially when it comes to like knowledge and knowing things. And so with you specifically, like, you know, always having this sense within you and then just recently stepping into that and embracing your role or that part of you that, you know, wants to connect and care and share with others. Now your knowledge and your research, as far as it, you know, being an herbalist, as far as it comes to that, um, I think it's, it's something that a lot of people do struggle with when you are the expert, you know, we kind of are like, well, no, everyone, everyone knows this, or you can easily just research and find that. However, you know, not everyone does know that, or they don't know where to find it. And yes, we can all do our own research, but this is obviously something that is important to you, something that you really um, appreciate and practice within your own life. Therefore, you do have that. It's almost like being an expert is like exercising that right to say that I do know what I'm talking about. I have yeah. gone through the training. I have actually you know, practiced what I preach and I get my hands wet with it. So you know, I just wanted to kind of preface as you're sharing all of this with that expert energy is, you know, 
yes, this may be like common knowledge or at least available for people to find, but it's people who have the experience and who have the deeper knowing of it um, that can share the specifics that is really important, especially in, the, in this time and space where we are being bombarded with a lot of advice and resources. So like, I do want to linger in that, what you can do preventative um, right now. I know you mentioned a little bit of um, um, elderberry, you know, as prevention, but then getting specifically into adaptogenics, like the reishi and the astralis, you said, or, or something. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, if you can just like draw upon that a little bit more, dive a little bit deeper into anyone who's listening, who wants to, to, COVID-19 is on everyone's mind, whether you feel like you're going to get sick or not, whether you are already social distancing or you're not, it's, it's, a, it's good awareness, good knowledge to have of what you can do should you get it, right? There's still a lot we don't know, but there is a lot we do know. So what we do know when it comes to herbalism and building up your natural immunity, this is a great space for people to really be able to, you know, utilize a resource like you to dive in deeper and to understand that. So yeah, anything else that you want to share a little bit deeper about those two would be great. So what we've been learning, there've been a lot of papers coming out of how, um, how in Wuhan they use both Western medicine and traditional Chinese medicine together, mm -hmm. which I think is super powerful. Yes. Um, and so we've been getting papers about what herbs they used and mm -hmm. So now what's happening is like the elder herbalist who I'm relying on for like this information. Yeah. Um, they are now, I don't know a lot of those Chinese herbs, but what's happening is they who have the knowledge of the, like the Chinese stuff, mm -hmm. they are extrapolating that and applying it to the herbs that we have here that we have access to. And so I do want to pause for a moment. Cause I do think there's something, maybe you've, you've done your own research on this, but the benefits of using things that are local, like especially local produce, local herbs, because what I've noticed, even when we think of like fruits, like apples and, and berries or like acai and blueberry, like all we'll fall into that antioxidant, um, you know, they're like every region, every country, every place has um, their specific fruits and vegetables and all of that and herbs, right? Sure. That's similar benefits, but mm -hmm there is a benefit to using your local ones as well. So I don't know if you, as you're doing your thing, if so that's the thing. Mm -hmm. It is something that I consider for sure. That's kind of where I lean is to like what is available locally. Mm -hmm. Also being aware that like I, I was like, yes, I was born and raised in this area, but my ancestry is not from here as well, right? So I need to be careful about overstepping my bounds into Native American right. cultures, rituals, territory, and right. really honor that and respect that and, and leave some of that for them. Right. right. I've really shied away from using white sage unless I tried to grow it myself. It's not that easy to grow. I tried to last year. I'm going to give it, I'm going to keep giving it a go, but I've stopped buying any white sage mm -hmm. for ritual purposes. Mm -hmm. um, Interesting a good point uh, um but i do think that you know local herbs are what our bodies now we are here we've been here our whole lives now mm -hmm. and that is what we are probably going to benefit the most from right and even if you think about like using local honey and how it has the anti-allergenic properties of honey that's within your like 150 mile range it's right. more sustainable and it's better for your body right right yeah. sorry i went off on a tangent it just, it just and, oh, and i agree when so I, guess, I guess the point for me is and what i try to think of you just reminded me as you were speaking about it is when we can source locally it is more beneficial for our specific bodies and when we can't obviously then there is all the you know the other knowledge and and when it's available but i like how you said being mindful of the local people in other places too because you know, in the sense of community and caring that, that also I think supports those values as well. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So I'm sorry, I interrupted you when you're talking yeah. about reishi and, and so you know, we were going back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think what we're finding is obviously supporting your immune system right now is huge mm -hmm. um, in the prevention stage. 
And even thinking about, you know, lung support right now, what, what can you do if you're a smoker? Can you make some shifts mm -hmm. that can help support your lungs? Mm -hmm. um, even, I mean, herbalists are very open about this. If you're a cannabis user, maybe you need to shift how you're using cannabis right now. Mm -hmm. um, um, and then, I mean, for when you actually maybe potentially do contract COVID-19, things like managing, like using diaphoretic herbs to help manage fever. So as opposed to taking a pill that's just going to bring down your fever, instead you can support a fever more naturally, your body's process of relieving a fever by taking herbs that are diaphoretic that are going to cause you to sweat the fever out is going to be in the long run more effective than suppressing the fever. Yeah. Right? And, and, and like working with it as opposed yeah. to saying, cut that off. I don't want that. Right. And, and so for our audience, why is that a benefit? Why would we want to um, not just take the pill to stop the fever, you know, with the conventional medicine as opposed to sweating it out and letting it run its course? I mean, if you think about just the philosophy of it, right, it's like, are you, are you fighting this disease or are you working with the disease to help bring wellness back to your body, right? Mm -hmm. So if you suppress a fever, it's going to come back when those meds wear off, right? And so you're going to keep having to take the meds, having to take the meds. And honestly, I don't even remember. I know there's like some meds that you're supposed to take and some you're not right now. I don't even know what they are. I don't even have any of that stuff in my house. Right. Yeah, whether right. it's Advil, Aleve, Tylenol, I don't yeah. have any of that. All I've I have is... Yeah, I've been hearing about that too. And yeah, and so to go along with that, the way I've always kind of thought about that, because um, fevers are scary and some of the symptoms are really scary. So yeah, the thought of taking medication that can stop it, you know, in the moment or quicker can feel appealing, especially when you're sick. But as you said, there's a difference between fighting the disease and then, you know, working along with your body's natural healing system. And one of the ways I've always kind of thought of that, about that for myself is like hitting the pause button, you know? So when you're sick, when you get sick, when you get the fever, when you get any of those symptoms that are just, you know, you just, they're unbearable and you want it to be over, at the end results, if you have two options where, yes, this, this can be over and you could either hit the pause button right now, feel better for a few days, for a few weeks, and then hit the play button where it just comes back again and sometimes with a vengeance. And then, yeah, you can hit that pause button again by taking those medicines that suppress it, which it feels better for a few days, you feel normal. And then you, versus taking something like um, nat in natural medicine and homeopathic herbs, all of that, um, taking something that is going to help, like you said, like sweat out the fever, help your body, uh, your body's natural immunity to, to, um, build up within. And it is still a battle. Your body can naturally fight it, but when it actually goes the, the natural battle route, it, it does fight it better. It doesn't hit that pause button. It actually plays it out to the end. You know, that's yeah. one way I kind of always thought about it just to gain perspective and have options to be at choice, right? So. Absolutely. And I also want to be, this feels like a really good time to be super clear that there are no herbs that are going to cure COVID-19. Let's just, yeah. let's just say that right now, because obviously right. <laughs> it's going to take a lot and a lot of people are not going sadly to, to survive. Yeah. Um, right. Right. And that's but having point. some extra supports right. in addition, I mean, a lot of people aren't going to be able to get to the hospital. So what can you do at home to help support the process of getting back to health? Absolutely. Because like we do, we know what we know, we don't know what we don't know. But what we do know is like you said, there are things that can help. I mean, even, even in the medical field, um, they are they've been uh, really supportive of releasing what you can do to treat the symptom. Right now it's treating the symptoms. So you're actually, yes, you can treat the symptoms and consider um, you know, the one aspect of medicine. And you can also consider the other aspect, the, the herbs, the natural ways that you can and be at choice and just understand what those medications, whether it's natural or conventional, what they are actually doing with your body and are they going to work along with your natural healing system with your natural immunity and understanding that 
the way we were designed, created, or exist, um, we have this ability to be able to heal to a certain extent, to a certain level, maybe not fully be cured of things, but to feel better and to be able to function. So yeah, anything else you want to share with supporting your immune system and in this time? Um, so I have a couple of different directions I want to go right now. So I'm trying to think which which one feels more right right now. So I think it's probably a good time to get into like what people can do at home with things they already have at home, right? Like, yeah. We're not going to be able to get out as much as we would like. So like, what can you do at home to support yourself? One, and um, one of the ways that I've been starting to incorporate some of this is to like start to post videos for people of like, what can you do? I love your time video, by the way. It's so simple. I'm like, oh, (laughs) it's probably, I thought I'd do like one or two a week, two, at least a week. And it's going to be probably more like once a week, but that's That's fine. That's plenty. (laughs) That's plenty. Let it it absorb in. Yes. (laughs) Exactly. So time, um, is an herb. A lot of the herbs actually are from culinary herbs. They're all, not all, the majority of them are from the mint family. Mm -hmm. Um, so there are a lot of similarities in the actions that they have. Oh, you froze for a moment. Let's see. Hold on one second. All right. So you're talking about herbs and being from the mid. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. So um, a lot of the herbs that we use in the kitchen come from the mint family. So they do have a lot of overlapping actions that they do. Mm. For example, like the thyme steam that we were talking about, oregano is another herb that can be used for that, right? So they Mm -hmm. both have an affinity for the respiratory system as well as the digestive system, which is why we see them in the kitchen. (laughs) Um, They're both, let's see, they're both, well, thyme is antiviral. I have to check my notes for this stuff. That's fine. I I get it right. (laughs) Thyme is antiviral. Oregano is antimicrobial. Mm. They're expectorant herbs okay so when you don't know that that means expect okay so expectorant is going to help break off break up a cough um and help get that out of your system now what we're seeing with COVID-19 is more that it's a dry cough um (coughs) excuse me (laughs) (laughs) you did the whole thing I don't have it Okay, I have to laugh at that because because I've been seeing so many memes on this too and people being afraid to even just sneeze and cough in public without being shot. So sorry. (laughs) (laughs) So because they work on the respiratory system, what you really want to do is have those herbs in contact with the respiratory system, which is why a steam is the best way to go about that. Mm, um, okay. And you can just use simply the stuff that's sitting in your kitchen cabinet and your spice rack. Um, and yeah, I love how stuff. simple your your video was with that too. Like literally just a big bowl of like hot water and just dump the herbs in it. And get the exactly. Towel. Throw a towel over your head and just like breathe deeply. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I will say I've tried. Have you ever <laughs> used this before? Um, Olba's? No. What is okay. it? Olba's is, um, so it's a Swiss formula. It's been around since the early 1900s, but there, there's a synergistic herbal blend of seven like anti-inflammatory oils, but it has peppermint eucalyptus in it. So especially oh for respiratory and everything like that, this is one of the yes. oils that I vaporized. But it made me think of that because the times that I'm sick, when I get congested, I, I was desperate one time and I just put like, maybe like 20 drops in like a little pot of boiling oh. water. And I was like, this is going to help me breathe. And I just put a towel over my head. I felt like my eyes were on fire, but my brain felt like it was definitely breathing. <laughs> so be mindful of that. I mean, but yeah. these are herbs. So, so these are herbs. So they're different than essential oils. Essential mm-hmm. oils are the volatile oils that um, turn back into liquid after they're distilled out from the plant matter. Um, you can strong. totally add essential oils to that steam, but I would use like one drop. <laughs> yeah, don't do 20. <laughs> That's funny. One drop of like either peppermint, spearmint, eucalyptus, even tea tree probably. It's not going to smell as wonderful as the other ones, but will be effective. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. 
Yeah, so time yeah. oregano you're suggesting for, so you said time is considered antiviral and you, um, oregano is antimicrobial. So yeah. they're both are really good to support the lungs as we know right now um, with the information, the facts that are being released regarding the symptoms of COVID-19 and mucus building up within those areas. And that's why it's important to break it apart, right? So. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And also to the moisture too, right? Having that moisture in your lungs, if you're dealing with a dry cough, is really going to help support that. So we want to keep it, your whole body moist mm -hmm. right now, yes. right? Yes. It's a terrible word, sorry. Yes. We know it's so important to, um, so, and anyone can look this up, but you know, with the people who have been unfortunately passing, you know, dying from this um, virus right now. And the information that we've gotten from China and Wuhan on the, them doing the autopsies is the hardened mucus that builds up and that overproduction that literally just suffocates that part of your body. So that's why it's so important. And, you know, we've heard the tips of drink hot liquids every 20 minutes. And, and in addition, I think it's so important to focus on those other ways to get the more than moist and make me laugh that moist heat but that heat <laughs> vapors you know <laughs> into yeah. your respiratory system starting in through your nasal passages that go down the back of your throat that go down into you know your throat your lungs all of that to just help again your body naturally fight it pass it along and get it out and just keep it moving so it doesn't exactly yeah 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 um another one is sage okay now with sage it is, um, it's another diaphoretic herb, okay. not another, it's a diaphoretic herb. So that is one that will help your body process that fever, right? So that one you, I would recommend taking as a tea, Okay. Um, just mm -hmm. taking a couple handfuls, let it steep for as long as you can, um, at least 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And it's also antiseptic, so it's really great for like coating your throat. Mm -hmm. So if you've got that dry cough that's like getting really annoying and like that sore throat, which is another one of those symptoms, the sage tea, even a little bit of honey in it, right, is also going to help coat your throat. I love so that's that. Really I love that. So, so yeah. you're recommending basically um, using your your kitchen herbs. So like com combining the the thyme and the oregano into some sort of steam bath. Um, where you just inhale those vapors in, uh, break things apart, and then doing a tea, making a tea with the honey. I like that. Simple enough, you know, and I'm sure if we look in our pantry, we'll find these spices there. Yeah. Exactly. And you can also use it as a gargle too. If you're like, if your throat is really, really bothering you a lot, just mm -hmm. sip it, gargle and spit it out um, mm -hmm. to really just get that throat nice and coated. Mm -hmm. um, just depending and like use, use this knowledge for yourself, right? Is it more of a fever and do I want to ingest the tea or is it more of a sore throat and do I want to use it as a gargle? Like mm. how, what's happening? Check in with your body and figure out, well, what would be best for me right now? Yeah, that's a great, great point. Love that. Is there anything else that comes to mind at this time that you want to share with anyone listening? Those are really great tips. I mean, just alone, you know? Yeah. Um, so I haven't, ex I just started experimenting with this one yesterday and I haven't actually taken it yet, but apparently you can make a garlic syrup, which really? is supposed to be really good for coughs. Also, I've heard about onion syrup as well. So basically you mix, you know, you chop it up real, real, real fine, almost like a paste. Mm. Um, and mix it with honey and water to make it like a little, just to make the honey a little bit thinner mm -hmm. and let that sit for as long as you can. So I made it yesterday, did like a little taste. And I was like, yeah, okay. how was that? <laughs> um, I mean, it's garlic and honey, right? So it's like not, not like, interesting. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I smelled it on my breath for the rest of the day, right? So like, thank God we're self isolating right now. Right, 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 right. <laughs> but it is good to help fight as far as we know colds and coughs mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. obviously i don't know if that applies to covid19 the oh. cough part probably whether now garlic is also another antiviral that's what i was going to add um, benefits of garlic it's also antibacterial um 
another expectorant, which is why they're saying for coughs. Mm -hmm. So something to potentially experiment with. I'm experimenting with it right now, so we'll see. And we'll stay tuned <laughs> to see how that pans out. And also you mentioned you have that Facebook page where you're going to be releasing, you know, these tips. Um, you already have your time video on there that you released last week, which is awesome. So, you know, anyone listening, definitely go to that page and I'll provide all those links to find Lauren and all the great things you're doing. And so, you know, at this time, and then even before all this happened, what are, what are some of the um, different ways that you've been um, supporting your circle of friends and clients and community? And I know you had mentioned that you recently stepped into this newer role. Um, yeah. And so right now I know that with being at home, we're all finding uh, innovative ways to still continue to connect. So what are you doing right now in this moment with offers and everything like that? Yeah. yeah. So I, um, in addition to being an herbalist, I'm also a corrective exercise specialist mm -hmm. and have training as a personal trainer. So one of the things that I've offered to my massage clients is that we can do virtual consultations. If like, mm -hmm. you know, as people are in different routines, um, their body's going to experience different responses to not being out and moving and doing whatever they're doing normally. So right. if they have some sort of flare up and obviously I can't go in and, and do the massage itself right now, mm -hmm. I can teach foam rolling techniques and their, how to use the theracane if they have that, or even a tennis ball. I love the theracane and lacrosse ball and those and foam rollers. Those are like, as a massage therapist right now who also can't receive a massage. I'm like, exactly. so you know, it is really important. So I'm excited to see um, that kind of support. It's very needed yeah. right now. Yeah, absolutely. And then like, I can even teach, you know, a corrective exercise or two to help like, you know, this, maybe the pain is in your back, but if we open up your pecs and then give you an exercise to make your back stronger, mm -hmm. that's going to support breaking that pain cycle that much faster. Yeah. So that's one of the things I'm doing. And then really mostly what I'm doing right now is really focusing on the herbs. So offering virtual support with that, whether that's a full um, online consultation where we go over your entire health history mm -hmm. and create a formula specifically for you. And then I'm also offering mini consultations right now, just specifically to what's going on with COVID-19. And like, Beautiful. so like you were kind of talking about a little bit before how, um, I'm losing my train of thought right now. Mm -hmm. um, the tips from Western medicine for how they're suggesting like dealing with the symptoms, herbalism can do that as well as we kind of talked a little bit today. Mm -hmm. um, also herbs are, um, when we, when we, I don't want to use the word treat, <laughs> when we support someone with herbs, we take a look at what their whole constitution is and figure out um, who they are as a person and how there are certain herbs. So we look at kind of like in Chinese medicine, I don't know if anybody has experience with that. They, they break things down into um, three different categories. So whether a person is hot or cold, whether a person is, here we go again, moist or dry, right. <laughs> and whether a person is tense or relaxed. And so we look at those three things and figure out within that. So one person may be hot and dry mm -hmm. and really like in the middle of tense and relaxed. Another mm -hmm. person might be cold and dry. So we mm -hmm. can choose specific herbs to support where that person is at. Mm. as well different organ systems might be going through different things right so like if you've got that dry cough like your respiratory system might be hot and dry but your digestive system might be sluggish if you're not eating you know foods to make things move or you're sitting around a lot more so mm -hmm. really looking at what specifically a person is dealing with it and how we can support that. So I'm just offering mini consultations that will provide a formula. Now it does not provide the herbs as well, but I can help you figure out where to get those right now. That's a perfect, that's perfect right now. Uh, timing wise, you know, with everything going on, you know, if anyone is just even curious about what you can do again, to be proactive when you can, to be prepared, but also to be able to, um, if you 
to deal with the symptoms, what you can actually do, right? So yeah, maybe you ha- even just have an allergy cold right now. There's a lot of different things going on, but I think even those mini consultations are so important. So if you're someone who isn't typically interested in these kinds of things, like what do you have to lose by just gaining the knowledge of what you can do right now while you are stuck at home? And, you know, it is a very loving thing to do, even if you have been feeling okay, you know, to keep in mind our friends, our family, our loved ones, um, you know, because they may have certain, um, you know, um, what is it called? Um, Pre-existing conditions. Pre-exist, exactly. Pre-existing conditions. Um, And this knowledge can be helpful as well, you know, so think of it, even if you're feeling like, you you know, you're okay right now, um, think of other people that could possibly benefit from this because now is a great opportunity to just gain more of that insight and that knowledge of what you can do. You know, there's so much uncertainty right now, but what can you do? What can you, um, you know, explore to be prepared should you or a loved one, you know, start presenting with these symptoms? At least you'll have some sort of, you know, and then I also like how specific, you know, even virtually that you can, that Lauren can help someone, um, with, I would be really interested in, which by the way, I'm going to probably set one of those up after this because I I would love to um, just pick your brain over some of the things that that I've learned as just an interested citizen. Like I don't have any, like uh, I won't say experience. I do have a lot of experience with taking those things myself, but even myself who is very knowledgeable in it, like my intention is to continue expanding upon that and to finding out and figuring out what I, what I can do right now, in addition to what I'm already doing. So it's absolutely it's, that kind of support is really helpful. Yeah. And also it's a way of supporting our community and supporting the healthcare workers too. Like if we're doing more for ourselves at home, it's less of a risk of more people really needing to rely on the medical system right now. So. Yeah really important too as a member of the community it is i actually write on our like i live we live in like a cul-de-sac and even in our area there's a few nurses here and there's one specific um she lives across the street now she is a nurse with um i think with maternity so they are blocked off but still she has a two-year-old at home and you know we 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 speak from across the like like more than 10 feet apart but still like they're still going out there and it's it's scary so yes like you said Totally. We, we live in a time right now where everyone can use that extra support. Um, and just think about the other person right now, because we're all affected, whether we're sick or not, we're all at home right now. And it, right, for us, you know, what everyone actually just got extended to April 30th, right? Um, it can be extended for even longer. So can we all get on the same page right now and do at least one thing with natural mm-hmm. immunity and boosting at least, I mean, that, that's a huge thing if you can get on board with that. And also managing the stress of it all too, right? Like this is hard. It's yeah. not easy. So <laughs> what can we do to support like the acute stressors and also dealing with the long-term stress of like what what this looks like? Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. And so the knowledge of the herbs of what you can take specifically also Lauren and I are both body mind coaches. And that's one way that we have been opening our doors with virtual support connecting like this. You, there's a lot of avenues out there. I mean, just go on any social media platform and everyone is collectively trying to offer something right now. So beautiful. There's so many resources, so many tips specifically today, focusing on what you can do as far as your herbs, even your, your uh, opening your spice cabinet right now and some simple things you can do, you know, there's a lot. So is there anything else that you would love to share with others listening today? Um, I just want to let folks know also that I am in the next week or two, depending on what that rest state looks like for me, I am putting together some herbal care packages that Mm. will have some Irvine supports that will have some um, elderberry syrup packets. Mm. People can make their own at home and some Nervine and lung immune support teas too. So that'll be coming in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. And I'll be sure to post all of those links um, to be able to find how you can purchase those, how you can connect, you know, with Lauren um, and just, just take advantage of that opportunity to get that specific one-on-one support. I mean, what else do you have to do? I feel bad for saying that, but still, so you can rest (laughs) and then, you know, just connect in in those ways right now. So awesome. Thank you so much. That was, thank you, Alina. That was very helpful. Yeah. I appreciate Um, you having me. Yeah. Yeah.
So stay tuned for some more one-on-one uh, -on -one support and other resources that uh, we can find during this pandemic time together at home. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, I'm gonna end there, but 